Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have a board here from a TV. So, a customer brought me this in off a 47 inch LG smart TV. He says it has a broken HDMI connector. This one, the other one's okay. So, apparently, he has a new larger TV. He wants to sell this one. So, he'd like to have this fixed first, obviously. It's easier to sell that way, so he's asked me to change this HDMI connector. Now, this is going to be a bit tricky on this one, I think. I mean, normally not much of a problem, but on here, you can see we have a lot of plastic around. We have the other HDMI connector. We have these, which I think are probably optical or something like that. There's plastic all on this uh, Connector is all plastic, yeah, there's lots of plastic around here. And that's not going to be easy to do, I don't think. I was chatting with my friend Debt behind me, so we have a plan. If all this goes horribly wrong, I can blame Debt, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, my initial suggestion was to use the hot air preheater and get this as warm as I can from behind put probably aluminium foil around here. I think it's better than capped on tape to keep the heat away from this area and unsolder that. I'd add leaded solder down here first as well onto the pins. But chatting between is, I mean, we realize that this metal frame around here, which actually goes to the pins here, would probably come off. We can probably actually dismantle this HDMI connector to get this metal frame off it and then we might be able to actually lift this plastic piece and leave just that piece in and that piece in the middle is what's connected to the pins and then literally just unsolder it so I think we're going to give this a go yeah so um, I'll try I've not tried this method before so guys yeah <laughs> we'll find out won't we but the metal frame, I think I'll try initially to unsolder this by adding leaded solder to this side, a bit of braid. Try to clean as much as I can. There seems to be two more pins here. I'm not sure what they actually connect to. Okay. Then add more leaded solder without flux. And we'll use the vacuum desoldering tool and probably hot air together with that. And try to unsolder this. So let's see if we can actually do it. It's great to try new things on camera when you've never done them before, yeah. We can all learn here. So, let's see. First of all, some leaded solder on here. Okay. That's actually not easy to do. I'm going to use hot air first to warm this entire area of the board up and then try again. So let's just get this warm. I mean, if it's a plastic coming through, it'll really be quite try not to melt those. Yeah, let's try to like warm this off. Okay, let's see now if we can do this. Yep, yeah, that's obviously working better now. I'll try on these two pins as well. I'm not sure what these actually attach to. Okay, so I've got leaded solder on there. I'll give it another warm. So I'm not trying to desolder this, I'm just literally trying to get some warmth into the whole area. I mean, another idea would be to hold this board in a vise and try to desolder this from the rear. But I've done that before on the channel, so we'll try this. Get a fresh flux on the braid, right? What happened? Okay. 
Well, it looks like it's coming off fairly well. Okay, I'm going to add some more leaded solder now because obviously this melts easier than the lead free stuff. Okay, so this should be mostly leaded solder now. I'll clean this flux off because let's probably clog up the desoldering tool. Okay, let's try. So we'll warm up again the whole area with the hot air. And we'll try this. Fairly good, but it doesn't come off. Okay. So it looks like that one is clear. This one almost. Of course, scratch that. This is still pretty hot. Okay. These two didn't go. That one, yeah, none of them really went very successfully. I'll have another go. Let's see if we can get it on another attempt so this one this one I don't think either of these two actually Desoldered all the way through. Okay. And this one. Okay. Well guys, you can see, again, it hasn't cleared the solder all the way through. I don't think this technique's actually going to work, which is a shame because I think it would have made it quite a lot easier. So while the board was hot, I've added some leaded solder. I put flux down here. I've now got solder on all of the pins. So I've bridged them together. That'll make this easy to melt. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put this onto the preheater, which is this one. Okay, I with my little uh, card or CADA, CADA 853B. 
I'll try and get the board as warm as I can from behind. I probably won't be able to melt the solder with this, but I should get quite hot. And then I'll come in with some hot air from the top and see if I can actually get us off the board. That's why I've added the solder to the pin so that will melt easily. So hopefully I don't rip any tracks off the board. I'll put some uh, Captain Tape or metal foil over here to try and protect them as best I can. So we have some tin foil now. You can see I've covered over most of those areas of the board. This should keep the hot air off. So hopefully we're not going to melt stuff. But I still have quite a wide area here to get the heat in into the board. So hopefully I'll just be able to lift this off. So we'll put this onto the preheater and we'll just warm it up. I'll put the thermo cup on so we have some idea of how warm it's getting. Best with this is just to warm it up gently. We want to spread the heat out through the board. We don't really want to get one particular hot spot. So I'll just gradually turn the temperature up until it's on maximum. And we'll see how hot we can get this. Well, we're up to about 100 degrees now. I have the preheater on maximum. Okay, so this is about as warm as it will actually get the board. Let's try the hot air now. So the hot air is on 450. Well, let's see if we can remove this. Yes. So put the hot air on to cool and let it cool down. So best time to clean the board is obviously when this is still warm. I've just done that, just remove the excess blob of solder. The rest looks fairly flat. But I'm going to the microscope. We can also have a look to see if anything else survived. And it looks like it did. We can see that this is desoldered just fine without damaging anything nearby. That is not a problem. Do we have a... Uh, something there? That? You know, I think that's actually a little transformer. Yeah, it is like a little transformer. It looks almost like two resistors that stuck together. No, that's not a problem. So that's fine. There is a problem though, and the problem is this is the HDMI connector that I took out, the broken one. Now, I had a look around, I had some salvaged ones, and I had this one, which is the same sort of mounting. Okay, same sort of mounting. The difference being this one has like these little bunny ears, and this one doesn't. But the one I have is too short. Now I spoke to the owner of this Samsung TV and he says that this effectively fits up against a metal plate. That only the narrower part of the HDMI plug actually goes through the plate, not the plastic part. So it won't go far enough in to fit into this. I haven't tried it, but it's obviously it won't go far enough in. Now I've had a look on AliExpress and I find dozens of different types of HDMI connectors but what I can't find is this one. Okay, I cannot find this. It says JAE on it. I have that. It says uh, possibly a part number as well somewhere. JAE 30. So we have a part number. 30827B23. And I've tried Googling for this and I just can't find it. So, question Does anybody know where I can get these type of HDMI connectors from? Because without this, I can't actually complete the repair. I honestly thought this one would fit because I thought it was almost the same height, but that was because. This one fits effectively the legs going to the board and this was sitting on top of the dome, it's very close. But obviously it isn't once you insert it into the board. 
I'm hoping some of you guys are more knowledgeable on TV spares than me. So if anyone can point me in the direction, that's all for the reason why I publish this video. Yeah, please do. And then I can finish this job. Well, I hope you learned a little bit there about how to desolder these sort of things in confined areas where it's a lot of plastic without melting stuff. So I think that in itself was worthwhile. So I'm sure you'll want to join me again soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.